The Star of Bethlehem, of course, is so fascinating. And indeed, it would be so helpful if we knew exactly what the star was, because then we could date exactly the birth of Jesus. We don't happen to know, of course, that it was December 25th, uh, 5 BC or any other year. We're not sure at all of the month in which Jesus was born. The best estimate among scholars is somewhere between June and December of 5 BC. So it would help to know what that star was. To this day, we cannot tell you exactly. We have guesses. And of course, there are two categories of response. The first category would be it's a supernatural item uh, sent by God. It stops and starts, and therefore don't try to explain it by any natural uh, astral occurrence. The other explanation says that it could be an astral occurrence that was used by God. And I think Christians ought to be ready to accept either alternative. Johannes Kepler, the great astronomer at Prague, noticed something in the sky that absolutely intrigued him. It was the triple conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. Three times Jupiter almost approaches Saturn. First of all, he calculated that that triple conjunction would happen only every 800 years. It happened at the birth of Jesus, happened in 800, happened in 1600 when Kepler saw it, will not come again till 2400 A.D., so don't try to wait around for it. In any case, this triple conjunction has a lot to say about why the Magi would make the trip. But what you see in Matthew 2 is that the uh, Magi referred to it as the star. And you see that repeatedly, so it seems like it would have to be a single object. Now, there's dozens of books written on the Christmas star. Almost all of them say it's a conjunction of planets. And it was a spectacular conjunction in 2 BC where Jupiter and the Venus came together. But they would have only been together as a single object for about an hour. Uh, they would quickly separate as the planets uh, move. I don't think the Christmas star was a supernova. A supernova, when it explodes in our galaxy, uh, literally outshines all the other stars in our galaxy. It's so bright you would see it in the daytime, and everybody would have recorded it. But novae are less spectacular explosive events than stars. By having one recurve with, say, a two-year difference, uh, that's, that's right in the range of what you'd expect for a recurring nova. And it would literally be the same star in the same position of the sky appearing approximately the same brightness.